All right, so hey guys, today we are with Anthony. He's an HVAC technician. And what we're gonna talk about today is your yearly HVAC maintenance for your system. So we're gonna have two points of view. So what professionals actually do to maintain your system and also what you guys can do at home as DIYers to save a bit of money. And uh, of course, to keep your system in full running performance. So Anthony, take it away. Hey everyone, thank you Pan for having me here. Um, so today we're dealing with, in Quebec, we're very cheap on hydro, so our system is an electrical furnace, meaning our, we have our air handling that uses electric elements to heat. Uh, we're going to start with what we call a heat pump, which will give you heating and AC throughout the summer. So here, we'll start down here. So for our basic inspection, we'll take our flashlight out. What we want to look for is any kind of dirt that is built up inside this furnace. Looking in here, Pan has done a very good job keeping his place clean, so there's no dust. Maintenance has been done. You want to inspect the coils in here. What you're looking for is dust buildup and any kind of oil stains. Oil, oil stain means it's a potential leaking point. It could either, either be a technician that has left something in there, but what if I do see any oil, I would have to further investigate with leak detection and to see if there's any, if it's in fact a real leak or not. Other inspections to do. Inspect the coils, see if, once again, looking for oil stains, any potential rust spots to warn the client to let them know that, hey, look, uh, this is rusty, potential leak is going to happen over here. But if you look at the coils, everything was super clean, no premature rusting. Another point to check for leaks or oil stains is these connection. Very important as a technician, we, we would soap it, look for bubbles to see which was done prior to the video any mechanical connection which is these flares this point and this point those are the most prone parts to having leaks after the coil has been inspected and clean next we look into the drain pan this white plastic bin is your drain pan so looking in here everything's nice white and clean that is what you want potentially there could be debris in there it could be rust it could be metals it could be um, gum from hard water, that dust from previous seasons that can accumulate and potentially block up your drain. Now to do drain maintenance, if you do not have the union, not a big deal. It can be easily installed from Home Depot for a couple bucks and a bit of glue. All you need to do is open it up, look inside. What you want to do is make sure that this water is nice and clear. Pan will show you after what it looked like before and when you would need to look into it. Now to clean it, what you can do is get a jug of water, pour it into this pan, have a bucket like I do right over here, watch the water come out. If there's no water coming out from this portion, from here, then this part has to be clean, which you just have to unscrew the adapter and get it clean. That has been done, this is good. Next, you want to ensure that water will flow out the condensate drain. This is your P-trap. This is your P-trap right over here, which is the most prone part of, of accumulating any kind of debris, dust, hard water, gum, whatever is going to get caught, it's all going to get caught in here. What I do is I use something called a coil jet, which is a gun based on a battery power compressor. Put in my gun, spray it, clean it out. For me to confirm it, I just listen on the end to hear that water is flowing into the drain. As a homeowner, alternative, alternatively, without having a compressor, what you could do is get an air compressor, same thing, pour some water in here, get a little seal around your air gun, shoot it in, and it'll flush it out, does the same job. If you do not have an air compressor, what you could do is get a shop vac, a wet vac. Same thing, fill up this trap with water, plug it on this end, go onto the drain end, pull it out, and vacuum to give it a nice suction to clean it out. Those are two other ways as a homeowner you can clear out your drain. Drain and water damage is the number one cause of damage in the summertime when from maintenance neglect. This should be done every season prior to using your AC. Reason for that is during the winter time, there's no condensation. Dust will settle in these pipes in your pan. And in the initial startup of the system with low condensation, 
that little bit of water is going to cake up all the dust and debris inside your traps. And every year that it does that, it will just slowly accumulate, accumulate until it's blocked. Water will fill up this pan. This pan will fill up, will pour inside. If this box is properly sealed, then it will fill up the box and cut your airflow. Otherwise, like this guy, it would leak out all over the floor, potentially causing major damage to floating floors. Uh, if you have your basement around it, if your furnace happens to be on second level, floor damage, very bad news. Very simple maintenance to save a lot of headache. Once you're done, confirm that you got water flowing. Bring this back up, tighten her up. What I always like to do as a last check, get a jug of water or a vase, pour it in here, ensure that the water is flowing and it empties out. That is pretty much the basic maintenance of your furnace, what you can do for yourself. So just a little recap, inspection, visual, you can do yourself. A, techni a technician, what they would do is to get a specialized chemical to clean out the coils. Um, you're looking for oil stains, looking for any rust damage, looking for any debris in your drain pan, doing your drain inspection and drain cleaning. If there's any further questions, you always comment on Pan's uh, comment and we'll be more than happy to answer. Next, we're gonna move on to your air filter. So air filter will always have a direction. If you're not 100% sure how to check with your air handler running, pull out the filter. What you could do is get a piece of paper, put it inside and see what direction the paper flows. As you can see, this one is pushing downwards. So airflow is down. If you cannot remember, once you determine it, mark it down like Pan did, save you some trouble in the future. Now for filters, just slip it back in, ensuring that the filter airflow is the same direction as your airflow that you determine. Good habit to do is label your filter change. So this way you have a reference point. Now in order to get a timetable on how much to when to change a filter, I recommend starting at once a month because every household is different. Some households can have more dust, carpets can affect the use of the filter. What you want to do is slide the filter out, inspect it. This one was done in October. So very clean. You're looking for the same, if it looks new, it's white, there's no debris stuck in the middle, it looks good. After one month then, you keep it. Don't need to throw it away. Then two months comes along, same thing. But now, if you start seeing it's starting to turn gray, starting to have dust, dog hair, whatever it is caught inside your filter, throw it out, put in a new one. These filters are good up to six months, meaning if you, it's not dirty before six months, then change it. And if it, even if it looks kind of clean at six months, it's gonna be starting to get blocked. Micro, all the, the pores will start getting clogged, which will need to be changed regardless after six months. And that's all there is to the filter. This is done. Next up, over here we have a humidifier. Purpose of humidifier here is to add humidity to the household. If you find it dry, if you have itchy skin, this is what's gonna help to improve the humidity. Basic maintenance, just have to open up the cover and swap out this pad every season of use. Meaning, if you're only supposed to use this in the winter time, so before your winter, you would want to swap this pad out. And that's pretty much all you need to do. After changing the pad, what is recommended is to turn the humidifier on 100%. Watch the water flow. You want to inspect if there's any water leaking from, from the joints over here, over here. If there's any water leaking outside of this tray, apart from the drain, if there's water leaking outside of the pan, then it just means you have to readjust your, your padding. That's all there is. There's a little damper over here. Summer, all this means you're switching your cover to not bypass in the, in the summertime, so there's no airflow coming in. When you switch to winter, it opens a louver like this so that it passes air in here to catch humidity to put into your house. So now that we're in the fall, I'm helping Pan getting ready to start up for winter, so we'll leave it in the winter mode. Over here, there's not much professional work needed. If, uh, 
If you can't feel the water leak, then you might want to get a plumber to have a look, but otherwise it's just changing your pad. You just have to get the model number, go to your local hardware store, and they could pretty much replace it. Next up, we have an air exchanger over here. Air exchanger's purpose is to help dry out the air in the winter time and to bring in fresh air into the house. Because nowadays the codes are very tight, the air, there's not much air exchange between a house because they're built envelopes for insulation purposes. So you want an air exchange to just bring in fresh air and remove the stale air from your house. So we'll just go through quick maintenance of the air exchanger. So air exchanger, this is your maintenance list. So we'll just uh, go through the list. So inspect exterior hood at least once a month, meaning the two exhausts outside, there's one intake and one exhaust. What you're looking for, if there's a bee's nest, if there's a bird's nest, if it's clogged with anything, if your bush is in there, just make sure all that is clear. That's it, that's all. Number two, clean the air filters every four months. So air filters are these two sponges over here. Very easy, just remove them, take them out, rinse. That's it, that's all. Dry it a little bit and put it back. Two air filters, there's no particular side. So either or, you can have them on any side. Just put them back. There's no directions on this one. General maintenance, twice a year, clean HRV core in warm soapy water. HRV core, this black box is the HRV core. Very simple. Once again, only note, it is directional. Arrow up to ensure that when you put the core back, you're facing up. Remove, just slide it out, just like that. What I recommend is getting a nice big bin like this one over here, fill it with warm soapy water, and all you have to do is dunk the whole core into the water for about 10-15 minutes, take it back out, let it dry a little bit, and put it back. Putting it back, you just have to ensure that you slide them into the tracks. And that's it. And next is doing a little wipe down. There's two drains, there's one on this side and one on this side. So you see there's a little bit of uh, dead bugs, whatever it is. Grab a nice little moist rag, just give it a nice wipe down. Ensure there's no other debris or any kind of insects that can block your drain to prevent water damage. Once you have cleaned up both sides, uh, something Pan likes to do, and it's also uh, encouraged by technicians, is to either get a bit of water with some vinegar, pour it in here, rinse it out to help kill whatever bacteria that could be building up. Nice little wipe down, just a little water bottle with a little mix of vinegar and water. So we'll just close this up for now. Ensure both are latched on, otherwise the machine is not going to start. Next, we're going to do a little bit of drain maintenance here. So after you clean it, what I like to do is I just disconnect it. Over here you can see it's a little bit black, but that's just stained from previous dirt. What you want to do, same thing as in cleaning this drain, I use my little machine over here. I'll just turn it on to do a little demo. So what I would do for all my drains, I put my tube in here, turn it on, and you can see with the soapy water and the pressure, it flushes out. So you see the water that's flowing out is clear. That means there's really no harm in doing this. So there's nothing to be concerned about, even if it's black, you can see that the water is, is clear. So once you have cleared this out, the way you can do it, same thing with the air compressor, you can just hold up the drain, pour some water through here with a funnel, stick the air compressor in there, just get a rag to seal it up, boom, pop it through so that your air will push everything out that's in there. Once that is done, don't forget to reconnect everything, snap them all back into place. For the dirt, if you don't like it, if it bothers you, you can always just change out the tube, there's no harm in it. But by flushing it out, you're clearing it of any danger. Uh, by putting a bit of vinegar or bleach, you're killing any bacteria that's in there. So there's no harm. And that's it. So that's it for the maintenance. So guys, thank you, Anthony. So again, Anthony and HVAC Tech. So awesome job. So he showed you what professionals do to have your maintenance of your uh, HVAC system done. And also what you can do at home to save some money. So again, if you like this video, smash the thumbs up button to show me your support. Also. 
top corner here. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay uh, subscribed, of course, and to be aware of any time I upload videos. And in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, man.